Come, hearties. I need a big sword and a pirate's hat. So I haven't got that, but I can give you information about Sea of Thieves, the latest DLC that's launched today. Brand new update, as well as a load of information about more Battle Royale stuff coming. Loads of good stuff, in fact. This week is a mad week for early access games. Going to give you all the information in the new revamped access show every single day at 5 p.m. Not to mention a few bonus ones we might be doing, but every day at 5 p.m. Brand new show giving you loads of information about early access games, new games, and updates for your favourite games that you enjoy playing. So, Sea of Thieves. We've also got information about Vigor, Fractured Lands, and we'll take a look at... And we'll be taking a look at Memories of Mars. Not to mention Egress, a Dark Souls brand new Battle Royale game. It's all here in the Access Show. Let's go! So, so much news to get through. We're going to kick off with Sea of Thieves. You should have downloaded the update for it now. And the servers should be coming back online around 4pm UK time. That is what happens normally. They do go down for a good few hours. But what can you expect in the cursed sales? Well, let's take a look at the actual forum post and talk about what they've put in the update notes. The rival skeleton ships has all but blocked the outpost, leaving the local traders in a tight spot. Something new has caused this and a personal threat to the pirate way of life. Why not ask your local friendly bilge rat in the tavern if he's heard any rumours? So just like the original DLC they launched, this is going to be the same thing. You talk to one of the bilge rats and he gives you the mission or the story. Now what's different about the story in this one is that it's going to be played out over a number of weeks. If you played the last update where you got a chance to fight Megalodon, it was over pretty quickly once you went and followed the little missions. But these are going to be played out over sort of events over the coming weeks. Part of the update is the ability that you will now be able to have alliances with other crews. You'll be able to do inter-alliances to take on some of the Cursed Sail crews. Now the Cursed Sail crews obviously are the skeletons that are going to roam about. They're going to be NPC mob on boats that you need to go and take down. Once the event is finished, they will still be roaming the waters. So we're always going to have these Cursed Sail crews running around the Sea of Thieves world. Brand new Brigantine vessel also launches. It's a three person cruise ship and it's meant to be more for like beginners. With the alliances, you will be able to share your gold and experience across the different crews as well. So it will make even easier something like the Megalodon trying to take it on. As you would expect, there's a bunch of new outfits and a bunch of new cosmetics for your ships. These are the new ship libraries that you can see quite colourful. New hunter equipment and weapons. And we've got brand new hairstyles and dyes. Also, we've got brand new stuff for the pirate legends as well. And new clothing, tattoos and scars. Not to mention the campaign cosmetics will be given to free once you've completed certain objectives in the game. They've also added new bone crusher equipment, new hunter outfit set, and that is pretty much it for that. So there's always going to be the brigantine ships from now on. It's not just for this event or this DLC. You're always going to be able to buy the skeleton themed items such as the lantern and the speaking trumpet. Even when the event finishes, you'll be able to buy it in the shops, but you have to unlock them first. And the hunt outfit and items will be available in shop for all players. Ghost ship decorations will remain available for those with legendary status. And finally, the new alliance system will relay in place to let pirates form future fleets. Time limited campaign content includes a series of set battles against the skeleton armada, alongside investigation into the cause of the attacks. It also includes the chance to unlock skeleton themed ship decorations, a skeleton scar, and special sails for the three regions. Now, in-game, there's going to be call-out banners left at outposts telling you which three regions are going to be having the big battles. So you are going to have to go out there and maybe form alliances if you want to succeed against the Skeleton Crews. This is also the last piece of DLC now until September. They've got nothing else till then. Sea of Thieves has had a rocky, rough road, but they do keep implementing and they do keep working on stuff. It's just a shame none of these features were in the game at launch. I think it would definitely be in a much healthier state than it is. Judging by the amount of ratbags that play the game and some of the comments I've seen on some of the forums, there is not a lot of love for Sea of Thieves at the moment. I know some people are super happy and excited and it's always great to get content. Maybe people do need to treat this as one of them games that it's great to pick up of and just try it when it's got new stuff. That's why it's great it's on the Games Pass. If you do have the Games Pass, you know you've not lost anything. It's free content and something new to do. So if you're loving Sea of Thieves still, go and download the update now and go and let me know what you think about it. Put your screenshots in our Discord, tell me what's been going on with the Skeleton Crews and what's the encounters like when you finally face up to a Skeleton Armada. 
If I get some time this week, maybe I can revisit and give it a go myself. And don't forget, they are still doing weekly events. Although it's not massive DLC, weekly there are going to be little quests for you to do in the game to keep you hopefully interested until the next DLC in September time. The Forsaken Shores is going to be the last sort of summer content and then there'll be one more piece before Christmas and then one more just after and that completes the DLC or Season 1 for Sea of Thieves. And remember of course it's all free. Right guys, you might have remembered I played quite a bit of Memories of Mars with Frasonis. It's a survival online game on PC, very much like Rust in Space. That's the general consensus how to describe it. You go around trying to survive, get materials to build up your base and get better weapons and upgrade your suit. Memories of Mars has had a tough launch. It didn't really launch very well. There is an extremely low amount of players playing it. The idea of Memories of Mars though is that every season they change and they implement new features and new items. Season 1 has just finished yesterday, so the start of Season 2 begins today. So when you go and update Memories of Mars on Steam, you should find out there's a bunch of new features. We're going to go over a few of them and I'm going to give you a little bit of info about next video talking about Memories of Mars in more detail. Now I actually got approached by one of the developers asking if they could give me some tips and hints when my Frasonis series was live. I actually just turned around and told him all the things I think they needed to do to improve the game and it looks like some of them have made it in although I'm sure they knew these answers already. They've basically dropped the amount of players on the servers and how many servers there are available because there were just so low numbers on there. So originally started off at 64 players, it's now been dropped to 40 and there really is only a handful of servers for the game. The idea is that when you go from season to the next season, everything is wiped. So all your progress, all your base, everything is destroyed. But you can also put time capsules or space capsules in place where if you get enough credits, enough of the currency in game, you can build yourself a capsule and it will house items for you to use on the next season. But you do then have to go and dig them items up. So that's a pretty cool feature in terms of what games do when they wipe servers. I really feel like Memories of Mars has got some really great ideas. There are lots of posts detailing exactly what's been changing from Season 2. I will be t discussing this in a separate video as a kind of review of Season 1 and what I hope they really carry on nailing for Season 2. But long shot of it is they've added some new vehicle types. So these are the first time you get a chance to actually drive in vehicles in the game. And they've added some new weapons, typically crossbows are in, and this is a space Martian crossbow. They've also given you the ability to be a female character instead of just male as well. So there's lots of good things. I just really hope they can pick up some players. But like I said, I'll be discussing that in a separate access video, just about Memories of Mars. So if you have been playing it or you do have it and you haven't touched it for a while, maybe go and check it out now and see what Season 2 has to offer starting today. Also just launched is Vigor. It's properly out now on Xbox One in the founders pack it's going to be $19.99 or around $15.59 UK pounds and it is a founders pack you get a bunch of exclusive emotes and skins and some in-store currency to buy new cosmetics when they go online it's just launched yesterday so it's available for everyone on Xbox One it will be free to play in 2019 I've been enjoying this game massively go and check out all my videos I've been doing on it already but if you wanted that founders pack Go and grab it right now. Like I said though, it is free to play in 2019 in February. But if you want to support the development team and see how this game progresses between now and then, you can go and play it just by buying the Founders Pack. There's a bunch of maps to try and take part in and it's a loot, shoot and scoot. The idea is to get loads of loot and get out of the map rather than be the last person standing. It's not a battle royale game. It's not a survival game. It's its own unique take on a different type of genre. The news just doesn't stop with early access games and Fractured Lands is something I've been showing you guys for a number of months now, talking about brand new Battle Royale games. It's set in a futuristic area or world, a bit like Mad Max, where vehicles are just as important as you combating on your foot or on your own. It launches today in early access, it's available now. It's $15.59 right now, 20% off I do believe starting for a sale and it does look like they've got a bunch of stuff going on. Now they've had pretty successful closed betas in the last few months but they never went as far as having an open beta so I really do hope they've managed to keep things stable. 
Now, I know some people are really sick of Battle Royales, but obviously there's a big percentage of you that really love them still, because you're still playing Fortnite and PUBG. It's just more or less people are getting a bit sick of that term, and maybe they're not giving some of these new ones a chance. This is exactly what I discussed in a video talking about Battle Royale recently. Battle Royale games are going to be here to stay, and I really do hope more unique games come out like this. I really want to give Fractured Lands a go, but guess what? I'm going to be showing you footage in the form of Big Worm 380. A good friend of mine is going to be uploading his thoughts and opinions on the battle royale games that are coming out this week not just fractured lands but we're also going to be taking a look at egress too i mentioned it at the start of the show egress is a dark Souls style battle royale game if you want to call it that the idea is that you run around these towns or these cities and you have to run away from the water that is rising as it's deadly eventually you'll come across other players and it's a fight to the finish who is going to be the last man standing there are all sorts of things you'd come to expect from a game that may have been inspired by Dark Souls. You've got potions and you've got very slow, methodical combat. You're not going to be button bashing on this one. You're not going to be just shooting people with AKs. It's all about timing and making sure your defensive work is good, as well as dodging and parrying. I really like it. Again, I think these are what we need in Battle Royale, is two unique style games rather than a bunch of clones, as we've seen from the Cullen 2 and Radical Heights, how wrong it can go when you try and just jump on the bandwagon. But these games have actually been in development for a good long time now, so I don't necessarily feel like they're just trying to copy, they are definitely trying to innovate what's already there. So, Big Worm 380 Gaming, go and check out his channel, the link is down below. He's going to be covering Egress and Fractured Lands for me this week, giving you guys my, his opinions on it, letting you guys know whether or not it's worth your time trying these two out. I will be taking a look at myself as well, I'll probably be playing it in live streams, and I'll keep you guys up to date on any news or information about when they're going to be coming to console. At the moment, both of them are Steam only. But as you can see, the gameplay is pretty combat focused, pretty melee focused, rather than necessarily shooting people. There is bullets and guns, but you can see how slow it's running around. Now this was footage from a good while ago, I'm sure they've improved things a lot more now, but it does look pretty cool. I really do like the idea of playing a Dark Souls, you know, Battle Royale. Lots of people love the PvP aspect of uh, Dark Souls, running around and invading other people's worlds, and this looks like that's got that in loads of it, just loads of elements of that, but keeping it in a nice structure so you don't lose progress in your story. So let me know what you think about Egress and Fractured Lands and make sure you check out Big Worm's video up on my channel later on this week giving you all the information you need to know. So there you go, that's another Access Show done and dusted. Go and check out the early one I've done today, talking just about DayZ on Xbox One, when you can expect that, and expect me at 5pm tomorrow. Also, don't forget, live streaming at Twitch, 11pm UK time. Tonight we're going to be taking on the bosses of Ark Survival Evolved. We'll be taking on the Megapithecus, the Dragon, and the Broodmother, all in one go, live on Twitch. Go and find the details down below. I'll see you, Ratbags, for the Access Show tomorrow.